Alright guys, how's it back again today? I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News and plenty to discuss today. The Grand Finals in the North American and many other VCT regions has now been confirmed. 100 Thieves versus the Guards. What a matchup that is at the start of the tournament to consider. But Synthols are a team that lost to both of those organizations throughout the course of the LCQ. Shroud has revealed his intentions to continue competing, but maybe not on Synthols and has pretty much confirmed that he's no longer part of the Synthols roster, but could still return in the future, potentially. Very much in Twitter your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it really upset the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that we're not far off 23,000 subs love to see it first of all we've got to talk about the craziness that went on yesterday in the Amir region G2 versus Liquid happens but also um, well G2 well Liquid versus M3C was the real game of the day early on but uh, yeah I said the other day that G2 were probably a team that might well look to disband anyway I know that Hoodie has been kind of baiting around this for quite some time so you know maybe they're not going to break up quite as of yet but like G2 they're not going to have the same team next year they want to get into North American franchising but that actually might not happen now because of the organizations that are getting involved over there so maybe they will still be in Europe which seems likely so maybe they will keep the same team but I kind of doubt it right because like as soon as the off season hits all the teams are going to have many free agent options out there and many upgrade options as well and like who knows maybe G2 or maybe M3C for example former Gamers gets through to champions and then they're thinking well Maybe we just pick up that team right instead and do what, you know, Gambit had in the past. This was a ridiculous game, actually. So Team Liquid versus M3C. It was on an Icebox Map 3. And um, it was 12-6 in favor of M3C. And Team Liquid brought this all the way back to an overtime. And then the overtime was absolute madness. 16-16 at a point. And Dimasic, though, he was making some serious plays. But um, in the end, it's M3C that come out on top in remarkable fashion. So they finally went a crazy overtime on Icebox. Win that upper final 2-1 and they then go to the grand finals and then Liquid dropped down to losers to play G2 and that one was a pretty close series as well. G2 I believe won game one. Liquid bounced back with two in a row to then make another grand finals. This is kind of what we wanted here really. M3C versus Liquid, the rematch to determine who's going to go to champions from the European side. Both teams playing incredibly well. Like I'd probably say M3C got to be marginal favourites based on what they did before but I mean man that was such a close series. We'll find out at least over the coming hours. This also in the East Asian LCQ, Edward Gaming they're doing it again, like uh, versus Onslayers, at least as it presently stands. Things could change. Onslayers, South Korean team, I believe, took down Japan or took to down the Japanese team in North Eptian to set up a Japan or to set up a Korean versus Chinese grand final. So that's a banger. Of course, only one of these teams will qualify. As you guys are watching this, it may have concluded already. Of course, we'll look at it tomorrow. The South American LCQ looks as follows. So Crew Esports played Furia and took them down 3-0. This is pretty interesting, actually, because I believe this event is going on on LAN and not just online over in um, over in Sao Paulo in Brazil I'm pretty sure so yeah Curry Sports kind of Chilean team they took down Furia in front of their home crowd 3-0 like um, yeah the crowd wasn't too happy let's just say but I do believe Furia versus TBK are kind of both Brazilian teams so the other team to qualify will be one of those like I so, yeah two teams qualify but Curry Sports have confirmed yesterday to be going to champions that would pretty much be expected but I mean yeah they mostly dominated this entire tournament from start to finish let's talk then about what happened in North America before we discuss the Sentinel stuff because wow this series was impressive I actually got this prediction right yesterday but I did think that it would be closer than it was 100 Thieves though man this is what's so impressive and exciting about this team and um, you know when this team was formed right and they put this squad together and some people weren't convinced and I was like well look DDK Sean Gares I've got a lot of uh, you know trust and faith that these guys know what they're doing so I do think these guys had a lot of potential as a team and also just um, in terms of turning up consistently and getting the best out of these players I thought they had a great, great structure there and ecosystem over there and the boot camps that they've done and all of this like they've pretty much done everything right 100 thieves to like rebuild their team start from scratch and try and build a competitive roster once again and um, that's exactly what they've delivered here they played phase last night take them down on a close ice box it was funny really because every map got more and more convincing i thought eventually phase were going to take one of these but um, i mean yeah phase ended up i mean yeah that was pretty tough there for flyer but game one i think was 13 10 in 100 thieves favor then game two like um 100 had a pretty good defensive side on, on of course breeze but uh, you know massive defensive side isn't necessarily everything but honestly like the preparation here was so good the offensive uh, attacks that 100T were making was was uh, honestly really impressive right I mean yeah Flyer probably should have hit that shot but he dies immediately Bang takes him down and man Bang what a monster this guy is we've known this guy's got an awful lot of potential for quite some time but I mean yeah this guy just hits shots that you cannot believe rookie of the year candidate no doubt about it and this wasn't even his most dominant map of the series which is kind of remarkable to think about but um, yeah 100T just had so much in the playbook the phase had really no answer for and um, especially their offense 
chances were so impressive. It went, what, 13-10, 13-6, I think, on the breeze, and then 13-3 in the end on the ascent. Like, um, this is interesting, of course, because the match they played a few days ago where phase one, two, one, and 100T pretty much choked the final part of the game. Like, um, and this, I thought, was what was uh, so good about, I thought 100T for sure would win the ascent here in this series because, like, um, I just think that the coaching staff that they have behind the scenes there, Sean Gares, and the ideas that they will have come up with to counter what that phase beat them with a few days ago because you guys remember when they were at 9-3 at the half and then in what phase one 10 defensive rounds in a row and there was no way that 100T were going to let that happen again and weren't prepared for exactly what they were going to do but still a similar defensive side Phoenix actually came out to play here for some reason for um, well as you can see the Phoenix of Baby Bay there goes down like yeah they thought it was going to be a good idea he was uh, spending a lot of time getting his ultimate orbs and then every time they would just get shut down immediately so maybe like probably a better time potentially for well phase in the future to pull out the uh, well the Phoenix to try and make him viable still in the game and um, yeah in the end 100 Thieves dominate the half they win a few rounds of their offense finally they managed to achieve that and they close out this series 3-0 not even close at the end of the day and they move all the way to the grand finals to play the guards incredibly impressive performance great to see honestly from um, well the entire organization they've done everything right from start to finish built a team of you know rookies mixed with players with a bit more experience got a great back end staff there behind the team as well to well deliver the goods that they have exactly done right here so excited to see what they can do today against the guards to try and qualify of course for champions with one spot remaining as baby base says gg thieves maybe i should have saved the phoenix for another day super proud of how far we came as a team don't know what the future holds with franchising though this is the thing because phase are rumored not to actually be a part of franchising for next season if they don't get a spot then what exactly do they do like i'm um, like they rebuilt their team they became a top five team in north america it's impressive stuff but i'm um, not exactly how far they would like to have gone and what that does mean though is hundred thieves are just one series away they play the guard today to determine the team that's going to go to champions i think hundred thieves on their current momentum sensors go down cloud nine phase like why can't they beat the guard i think the way they're playing right now they most certainly can and i'm sure they'll be very well prepared then again though the guard have had a little bit of an extra day off they will get i believe an advantage in the veto side of things i'm pretty sure it is a straight best of five with no one map advantage 21 but um it will be like um, a slight advantage to the guard in terms of which maps they can choose but hundred thieves do seem to have a lot of strength in depth there as well the sad thing about this is for Sentinels is that both teams they lost to to go out of the tournament where the two teams that made the grand finals right Sentinels go out what top six but um in the end the only teams they lost to were the guard and winners they lost a very winnable series I'm sure they'll think wow if we just played the icebox differently and, and Shroud wasn't planting like uh, we could have won that series against the guards and this tourney is very different indeed but um and then of course they lose to 100 thieves in a loser's bracket as well also in a very close series so probably showing really that Sentinels were better than maybe they looked at the time given how good those those teams seem to actually be. Walker says, you know, we didn't get to go to champions this year thanks to the entire team for, you know, the limited time, of course, that they had to put in the effort. But this is the Shroud question mark, right? Because this was his bio previously a few days ago. Valorant player for Sentinels in the bio. He has now, over the last 24, 48 hours or so, removed that from his bio and it now looks like this. With them, well, it no longer says it effectively. So he's confirming effectively he's no longer a part of Sentinels. We knew that the contract was in place, that it was only for the LCQ. It wasn't even, he wasn't even sure that if champions happened and they qualified like that he would be going there so it was only an lcq thing he's now no longer a part of the sentinels roster that is official but he does say as i'll share here a clip for you guys in a second like um firstly shazam is saying well look shroud was kind of beating himself up over a bad performance but they were trying to tell him look it isn't really a big deal and then shroud goes on to say that like look he still wants to compete potentially and maybe even on sentinels in the future if franchising happens as he expects it to but for now his journey is over and that uh, maybe that's going to be it for shroud in professional play it was really really it was really really nice to see all of the players or not all of them but to see a lot of players in the professional scene give me love i thought that was really really sweet uh obviously you guys as well but it's cool uh, are you still on set right now no. No. I don't think so. My journey ended with the LCQ. Would you still compete? Uh. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I would. I would. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. The story's not over, okay? It's just a pause right now because everything's done. Sentinels is done. 
They're not playing until franchising, if they're even in franchising. Fingers crossed that they are, right? And if they're in, and they still want to play with me, and we can figure something out together, it could still happen. It probably will. M maybe. I don't know. Let's just say maybe. How's Shad feeling? I, I can't really speak for Shadi. Zaytor, thanks for the time. I can't speak for him. I know he was... Uh, he's a little sad or frustrated, you know, that he felt like he had a rough series. But, um... And he, like, apologized, but we're like, don't worry about it, literally. Like... There's so many things that could have went differently. So what do you guys think about the future of a Shroud, right? Of course, like, you know, difficult time for him over the last few days. Had a pretty tough series up against uh, the series they lost, of course, to 100 Thieves that went on to demolish FaZe in the fashion that you guys can see on screen right now. Some really no shame in the way Shroud performed, I think, there. Did a solid job for the team, what he was expected to do, really. And um, I think, like, a lot of people really proved them wrong to a certain extent that he could actually come back and still be competitive after many years out of professional play. Then again, though, what is the next step for Shroud? Like, he's, of course, going to step back into were kind of streaming for now but I mean he does still seem to have a vibe to come back to competing right and of course if franchising is in LA as we expect it to be on land right for the North American or the Americas franchise league then you would imagine that a team might give Shroud an offer. Will Sintels want him back? That's the question because going into next season like every team could theoretically change. I do wonder what uh, Sintels will even look like next year they could see many options on the market because like look this entire phase team might not be in franchising right. This entire team could be free agents. And therefore, Sentinels and other teams will have plenty of options to choose from in terms of the roles they might want. I mean, Superman could be a free agent kind of smokes player, so already you've got to consider the options there. So look, maybe they don't want to play with Shroud, maybe they still do. He does seem to imply that, like, look, if they want him back and everything works out in his favor, yes, he might still come back and play or might play for another team. But um, yes, Sentinels, Shroud, it could well be the end of the line. And I do wonder if Sentinels as an organization would maybe prefer to go down a different route with all the free agents out there rather than get getting Shroud back for next season. But definitely intrigued to your thoughts and all that in the comment section below. But yes, tonight the final is here. The Guard versus 100 Thieves. The Guard have looked great so far this tournament. They beat FaZe comfortably, beat Cloud9 comfortably. But then again, 100 Thieves also demolished FaZe. So don't want to read too much into that dominant series from the Guards. I do think these teams are incredibly closely matched. 100 Thieves and another Grand Finals here for them. What a run that they made all the way from lower round two. But um, yeah, I kind of want to take this 100 Thieves glory run right. I had an idea that there was going to be some team that made a loser's run this tournament. I did not think 100 Thieves would get this far. I thought they'd be a team that would got maybe top four, top three. I did not know they had quite this in the tank. But on the momentum they have and the ability they seem to currently have and how well Sean Gares, I'm sure, has got them drilled for this one, I think they're going to deliver the goods here, right? It's going to take another crack in series and bang and Asano and the pressure is most certainly on now. But um, yeah, best of five. They look so good today in terms of the strength and depth of their map pool. I think that I'm not sure the guards quite have the same in the locker, but should be a bang in series, no doubt. Definitely intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, told the YouTube gods, that's a good video, I was like you should see it as well, and I've grown the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.